Welcome to Create with Chris. Today we are taking stencils to the next level. Hi, I am Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to share with you some fun things that you can do with stencils that really will elevate your painting and make you look like you are fantastic. So before we get started, I am Chris Hoy. I am the owner and founder of Comfort Distributing in Urbana, Ohio. CD stencils, pixelated palette, Chris Hoy designs, and I think that's about, that's enough, isn't it? Lindsay is here with me today, so if you have any questions, be sure to ask, and just say a, a hi and let us know where you're joining us from. Let's and see. We have Sandy from Indiana, Linda Safranco from Sunny Hot, Louisiana, mm -hmm. Debbie from Massachusetts, Sharon from Tucson. We got you from all over, so thank you for joining. Before we get started, while everyone's kind of tagging on here, I do want to talk about a couple things. I need you to look at your calendar. I am offering a free Zoom class. All you need to do is purchase the pattern or e-pattern. And when you do that, you will automatically receive the link to the class if you are not available on May 11th, no worries because you will receive the recorded video of the class to view at your leisure. So it's a win-win situation. All you need to do is purchase a pattern or e-pattern. You can also pick up the class bundle at a discounted price as well. Also, let me go over here. My Christmas club uh, design my Christmas ornament design club is six times a year you'll receive an ornament the pattern all the instructions lots of color photos it's a fun exclusive club these are not available if you are not a member and I try to do something really um, unique and kind of a learning technique with that while you're checking your calendar uh, don't forget next Tuesday, May 10th, is Facebook Live Sale. It's kind of like Mother's Day. You can buy yourself some things you didn't get on Mother's Day. So join us for that. Super prices. Um, you don't want to miss out on that. So we are ready to get started on some of the things I want to talk to you about today are what to do with stencils to make them look just a little bit. I'm going to move my camera just a touch make your stencils look a little more um, exclusive and kind of elevate your painting levels a bit. Switch over to this camera. This is a small ornament that I did, and I don't know about you, but to paint all this little tiny lettering, not my cup of tea. If I can use a stencil to create these little fonts, and, and I stenciled the little package detail as well. Just a fun way, the little tail lights, perfect circles. These are all different elements that are available with stencils that can make your ornaments, your designs go a little bit quicker and they look just perfect. Also what I did with this, I don't know if you can see it or not, it has sparkle on it. So I just put the stencil back on there and I put some um, starlight varnish on it and sprinkled a little bit of glamour dust and the sparkle only goes exactly on the lettering. It's a great way to add a little bit of bling to the letters and have it be perfect without having to trace over all of these with your brush. In addition to just painting letters, I like to add a little drop shadow and you can see on these letters, let me go in just a little bit more. There's a little bit of a line along each side. And this is very easy to do with stencils. You can do this with your liner brush, but this is super easy and I wanna show you how to do that. These are teeny tiny and you just have to be really careful to create that look. This is another one that I did with the drop shadow. And you can see I, I stenciled the letters, but 
Can you see this little drop shadow? It's a little bit muted because it's dark, but it's along each one of these letters. And it's just by shifting the stencil that you get that look. In addition to drop shadows with lettering, you can also create that same look with decorative stencils. So not only can you create drop shadows with the letters, you can do it with snowflakes or lace or in any design. So I wanted to show you a couple ways that you can create that. The drop shadow is probably the easiest to create. Just gonna put this in. I went ahead and stenciled this with, I'll turn the light on a little bit here, with a Deep Midnight Blue. And I want to add a drop shadow. <clears throat> Just gonna take my stencil, I line it up. I'm gonna shift it down and shift it over so I can see an evenness all the way below and to the right. Now you can move it to the right, to the left, you can shift it up, you can shift it down. Be consistent. So if you have a lot of words and you're gonna shift it over and shift it down on one, do the same thing on all of them. Just so I grab a separate color here. And I am using my Spectacular Stencil Brushes. These are really nice and soft. It allows you to get perfect detail without a lot of blobby edges. However, it's not always the brush. You have to be aware when you stencil to not have too much paint on the tip of your bristles. So I usually wipe it off on a paper towel before I begin to stencil. You don't want to pound it so hard that you're going to push the paint underneath the stencil, nor do you want to have moisture on your brush because that will dilute your plant paint and cause it to run under your stencil. You can tap, you can swirl. Either way works well. I want a little stronger coverage, so I am tapping. Normally two coats will work best. This is kind of dark on dark but when I remove it, you can see it has that little bit of a shadow below and to the left. And I told you, you can also do this um, with a design. And I want to show you how to do that. We have these new corners that are just stunning. So I went ahead and stenciled it on. Oh, just a little, I always go the wrong way. Okay, uh, so I have this beautiful, isn't that gorgeous? Have this stenciled on, line it up, and I'm just going to bring it down and shift it over just a touch. And make sure that it's even on all of those. Always you wanna anchor that down so it doesn't move around on you. Get a little tape on that. I think I'll go with a brighter color on this so that it stands out a little bit more. I was trying to decide what color to use. I think that'll blend into the background. Let's we'll just go with white. White is always good. I'm bumping down to a smaller brush. This is a number four. And I just wanna get those tips clean and stencil this on. Hoping this is gonna look like a dimensional lace. I haven't done this before, so I encourage you to play. This is how you figure out new, exciting things to do. If I swirl, I get a much softer, almost a dry brush look, and I'll do part of it in a swirl. It's not going to be as opaque. It goes faster, much faster, but I think you'll be able to see the difference in the intensity of the coverage. Usually with white, you're going to need a couple coats anyways, just to kind of get that good. Oh, that's beautiful. You can see where I swirled it as opposed to um, pounding it. 
pronouncing it. I always go the wrong way. But look how gorgeous that is. This almost looks like a trump lull where you get that dimensional effect. Isn't that beautiful? Super easy. Agree with me because this is, every time I do something like, like this, I think, oh my goodness, how long would this take with a paintbrush? And you know what I'm talking about. It would take quite a while. So to be able to create something so very impressive, so very easily, it doesn't mean that uh, you go fast and are not careful. Take your time, you know, be, be specific about how you place your stencil, what you do to it, and you can really create some impressive results as opposed, now I thought the, just the plain stencil corner was pretty, but when I add this second layer on there, it just becomes amazing. So there's a couple ways that you can do a drop shadow. Another thing you can do with the stencils is create design in the letters. And you think, okay, so how do you get just the little snowflakes in the letter? So I have my Joy stencil, okay, and I'm placing it on there and I've stenciled my letters with the red. And then I can go back this is where you get to impress your friends. I'm gonna anchor my stencil on there. Just lift it up. Slide that snowflake stencil in there and put it where I want it. And I stencil my snowflakes. After I get this one finished, I'll put them over here. Decide where I want the snowflakes to go and I can stencil this on there. Get See how it works. This is a very impressive way to add design on your lettering, but it doesn't have to be just lettering. I had a circle stencil. Out, no, in. Okay, I had a circle stencil and I just put the star stencil underneath the circle, the snowflake stencil, the swirl stencil. Just very easy to double up your stencils and create that design look. So it doesn't just have to be letters. So I went ahead and I put the, this says family, but we're doing fam today. It's a word. It's a word. It's a fam. Short for family. <laughs> I should have done fan, F-A-N. Okay, so. Anchoring it down. Whenever you work with a couple stencils on top of each other, make sure you anchor it down with a piece of tape because you sure don't want that sliding around. I thought it would be fun. I have this beautiful lace stencil, but I didn't want to put lace on it that way. I thought it would be kind of pretty just to put lace at the top of the letters, right? Get a little bit of, just gonna go with white again. I want this to be a little stronger, so I am tapping it. I have a very gentle tap. These bristles are soft, so you don't have to pound. Stenciling is, is patience. Just take your time. See how the paint's laying on. Don't try to get too much and go too fast. It won't, will not work. Too much just runs underneath and kind of creates a mess. Isn't that pretty? And you know, I think I want to do it down here at the bottom too. So I'm gonna be pretty here at the bottom. We'll see. I've not done this with this particular stencil before. What number lace stencil is that? 19481. Thank you. I love these lace stencils. I have had so much fun. I did use, I don't know if it's this particular one. 
But look, look how pretty that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? I have so much fun with these stencils. This is our new collage line. And it is like opening the doors for some really fun designs, impressive designs. And we'll just line that up, kind of putting those little dashes right against the bottom. So you don't have to use all of the stencil. I'm not reloaded yet, but I think I'm gonna have to. Whenever you reload, always make sure that you have that paper towel close by to brush off that heaviness on the tips because every time you reload, you're gonna have more volume of paint to transfer to your surface. Oh, that really dry. You know, this almost looks like um, gingerbread cookies kind of thing. So I think I think that would be fun for gingerbread. What are those ones that they dust with powdered sugar? Oh. Um, yeah, the cookies. Pizzelles? What are they? Pizzelles. I have a maker. It's like the little mm. waffle things, and it. But that's what the design looks like to me. It is. <laughs> you could actually use that's these stencils cute. in baking too. Yeah. Said. Use them in baking. Absolutely. Just make sure you clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm wondering. I had I wasn't gonna do the M, but I kind of got carried away. I was gonna show you how you could add a full design behind it as well. So I'm gonna go in just to add I'm gonna dry brush this. See what this looks like. Just doing a soft swirl. Just to get a little bit of design on there. So you could even gussy it up a little bit more. Probably would have went with a smaller stencil design because um, it kind of becomes too busy with this little lace and these big. So I would stick with this. I think that looks really pretty. Maybe on this one, if I would have shifted to a color that's closer to the background, so it's more of a tone on tone, I think that would work. So what could you do to fix that? Very easy. I'm just gonna go back with a little bit of see if we can tone it down a bit. Just gonna go back with a little bit of this charcoal gray, kind of tone it down so it's not such a, a strong design. So even if you're not crazy about it, not a bad thing. Oh, much better. Yeah, so you can play around with these, create different looks and really dress up letters. You can do the drop shadows. I could have added a drop shadow on this. If you wanna create a cookie, you could do a little bit of icing down there. I, I think the possibilities are really close to endless when it comes to stencils because they are so versatile. Really loving this corner design as well. So what else can you do with these stencils? I just painted this. And what is the name of it, Lindsay? Spring nesting. Spring nesting. I wanted to do something a little creative in the background besides just a plain background. So I used the mishmash stencil in the background, which has music notes and some script writing and just very soft design. What I wanted to do was not lock into a particular color. And the background has multiple colors in it. So when I stenciled, let me zoom in a little bit, maybe. Oh. Hey, Lindsay, I just uh -oh. lost my screen. Please hold. 
my IT person is on it, so hang in there. That came in and locked me out. Ruh -ruh. I don't worry when something happens because Lindsay will fix it. So we're gonna put this on for just a second while she gets me back into where I need to be. Technology is fantastic. Oh, oh. nope, that's not right. Oh, no. When it works. I'm still here. Make sure that's locked in. I just got a good close up of my chin. Okay. <laughs> We are okay. There you go. We are back on board. Thank you, Lindsay. I used to panic, but we've been through <laughs> untold adventures with technology. So it's not shooting out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had a kind of a thing last time, and it shot across the room. It shocked the both of us. Okay, what? Well, let me zoom in. You can see that the stenciling is a little bit blue. And I, I just kind of uh, went into browns. I think this is like a cobblestone, but it not having it all one color is a great way to add subtle design in the background. And as it goes toward the bottom, I, I let it get just a little bit stronger, but it's a great way to add interest very softly and very quietly. You're not going to take away from the main design. Which is just a little bit. There we go. You're not taking away from the main design, just making it a little more interesting. But the one part that I really had fun was doing the side edge. And I think just adding that side edge made a phenomenal difference. I think otherwise it would have been kind of boring and samey, samey. Wasn't sure when I did it how it would work out, but I thought I would play around with it. I loved it. I think it's a fantastic way to create a beautiful, beautiful border background. You could use it as your main design, very easy to do. So I wanted to show, share with you how to create that look. And I use the 19477 stencil, and I think it's called Brocade, I believe. Oh. Deco Collage. Deco Collage. You know, all these, all these new names I have trouble keeping up with. So if I want to create a border, I can use the edge of my stencil as the edge of the design. So what I did on this one, I just lined my stencil up to this left edge. And that way I don't have to mask it off. I don't have to um, try to make it straight and even. I just did my straight line and then bumped it right up to that. And then I know I have a straight edge to work with. So somebody got paint on my sample, but we'll pretend. I'm going to, we'll just let the top edge of the stencil be at the top edge of the plaque. And what you can also do is see where the point is. I'm going to bump it right on the edge all the way down. And I know it's straight if I do that. Anchor it down. And I am just gonna take some white. I don't want a heavy coverage on this. I want it to be very soft. Go back and enhance it. If you start out real strong and heavy, then you don't have any, especially with white, you don't have any room to go back and add highlights. I'm gonna load my brush with white, wipe that excess off, and very gently start at 
I always say very gently because I started out, I had too much heavy paint on my brush. Just want a soft, just almost like you would put blush on your cheeks. Very soft. And this brush is uh, very, it, it resembles a cheek brush a lot. It's just a very soft bristle. This is a beautiful stencil. It's, it's okay when you look at it, but when you stencil with it, it just makes a really nice design. So we have this pretty design on here, but we want to do more. And I am just going to take my half inch angle. I always like to start with a bigger brush. I may have to bump down to a smaller one. Loading it with charcoal gray. I love that color. It has kind of, it's an earthy brown. It has a little bit of grayish in it, a little bit of gray, a little bit of brown in it. Hence the name, I suppose, charcoal brown. I'm just going to scoot it along this left side a little bit. And I am going to go down to a smaller brush. And I use the Joe Sonia brushes. I love the Joe Sonia. We carry them at Cupboard Distributing. I, I have a, the same set I had five years ago. They just are really workhorses. Now this is no different than if you were shading or highlighting anything else. I'm just gonna kinda go down that left side. Am I being super fussy? No, I just not being messy. If that makes sense, I just want to scoot it down that left side using, uh, we're wrong way again. Lindsay's laughing at me because this is my challenge. I don't know, Mike. Just using a hint of paint. You don't need a lot. You don't need much. And am I going everywhere? Kind of just down this left side. You can see how quickly it it goes. If you painted this design on, you would still need to go back and shade it. So this is just eliminating that step where you go back and paint it all on by hand by using that stencil. Plus, you know with a stencil that you have a perfect design. So what if your stenciling didn't come out perfect? It's okay because by the time we add all this little bit of shading and highlighting on there, you can see what a huge difference that does just between this one and that one. Really starts to lift it up off of the background. This is such a very um, forgiving technique. You don't have to look for perfection. Try not to get it too strong and you, you don't want that real perfect edge. So you don't want to do this. It's going to take forever and you're going to get this real hard edge. You want to soften that edge and let it just kind of blend out. I have more, much more water on my brush than I have paint, and it looks like it's gonna take a long time to do this, but actually, it's kind of fun. Um, it goes quickly. You really don't like to stop because you get on a roll when you have your brush loaded correctly. Very key, you need to have enough water on your brush that you can float for quite a while before you have to reload. If you're reloading often, your brush is not loaded correctly. Look at how it flows off of your brush because you don't have much paint. 
you can really scoot it around. You're kind of depending on that moisture to float that around. Okay. I want to keep going, but I'm going to stop at that because that gives you an idea. Let me go out just a little bit out. No. Okay, when you spread your fingers out, you think you're going to go out, but you go in. A man must have designed this. I'm sorry if there's any I'm men out there. I do positive. not mean to offend anyone. Just going back in now with a little bit of white. And I'm going to brighten that left side. So here's where if your stencil didn't turn out perfect the way you wanted it, you can go in and brighten those areas up. While you're doing that, you can also fix anything that's incomplete or not looking quite. I had a little bit of shading on that, so I can just bump it up there, brighten it up, add these little touches of highlight. They don't have to be perfect. You just want it to kind of look a little bit dimensional. Are you liking this? I don't hear any feedback. Everybody? Yeah. It's just Lots of hearts. It's just such a fun way to really dress that up. And if you look at the difference between the plain, take away that little spot there, the plain and where I went in and added all of this shading and highlighting on here oh my goodness it's huge i just was so excited when i did this because it just takes it to that next level very easily and when i say very easy it doesn't mean it doesn't take time it's just not hard to do and we've all struggled with stroke work and doing different things so kind of fun to be able to create just a little bit of design very easily that looks like you spent hours on it and you just need to do a few simple strokes to create this look. It's beautiful. This is almost like Calgon. Take me away. Take me away. But look how pretty that is. I mean, it just really comes up off of the background. You can always go back and add more shading, more highlighting. I'd love to go down on the side. I should put a little piece of tape down there, but I'm going to wing it with a little bit of that edge look at that wow 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 isn't that gorgeous I can also take a little bit of this charcoal gray or even some of the I used a little blue in the background let's put a little bit down this side as well now you don't want to make it samey samey so this side's not going to be nearly as intense or as strong as the other side but when I look at it it looks like it kind of frames it in so that you have a you have two edges on it um, Sharon said that this looks like a texture paste was used somebody else asked me that they said did you use texture paste on this design and I said no um, it's much easier than texture paste because texture paste you have to wait for it to dry I did use texture paste on this one so you can see the difference this is a little bit brighter well the colors used too are different but different techniques it's so much fun that we have all these options available to us so definitely wanted to show you those three choices that you have for using simple stencil designs to add I, I call it the wow factor it's 
Can you show the full on the spring nesting again, please? Yes. Someone was asking about that. Maybe. Oh, I went the right way. Yay. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can zoom in just. Uh, there we go. Virginia said, I vowed not to buy more art supplies this month, but here I am on the third oh. day looking at buying a load of stencils and those great brushes. But you know what? When you get, when you can, go over here maybe. When you can buy something that you can use over and over and use it for designs that you already have, use it to just embellish or to elevate what you're working with, that's what this does. And that's why I get so excited because I can take what would have been a, a nice design and I can do these things to it and just really make it a wow design. And I always tell everybody, I'm always looking for that wow factor. And this is one of the ways that you can add that wow factor either with simple shading and highlighting, which we love to do. I mean, we've done that for years and years, but why not do it to a stencil design just to really jazz it up, adding that um, drop shadow. And when I did this flower cart, believe me, those letters were pretty boring without that edging on them. So that's, these are the things that really really start to make a difference. This little bit of drop shadow on the lace, adding designs to the lettering, creating your own designs. You can look at the stencils you have and um, just really turn them into works of art simply by adding these little touches and combining them together. This is definitely decorative painting, but in the art world, it's called mixed media because we're using stencils to combine with just painting. So it's not just flat painting, but I call it art, right? We are artists. So this is how we create these really, I'm dated when I say really cool designs, but I I have so much fun when when something I do something and I'm thinking ah, I don't know, but give it a shot. If you're not sure, play around with it. This is how we come up with new techniques and new ideas and new designs. It's just testing the waters and seeing what's going to happen. Stencils are amazing tools to use in our art world, so don't be afraid to throw them back in there. What's the worst that could happen? You paint over it and start, you know, paint it, start over, not a big deal. So play around with it. I always encourage you to put your thumbprint on it. Hopefully these different techniques that we play around with will encourage you to try some new things and use them on the designs you already have, the packets that are sitting there waiting to be painted. Think about embellishing them a little bit with these different techniques because they do add so much. And I think you'll get excited. I love to try something new and I get excited. I want to show everybody, look what I did. This is so amazing. They're going, wow, how did you do that? So that, that's kind of the wow factor that you're looking for. Um, Darlene Hawkins was telling Virginia about your brushes, that they were fantastic. And I just happened to mention that you have some new ones coming up. I do. I'm hopefully very shortly. I'm testing the waters with them now. And is it two or three? Hope oh, it's going to be three new brushes and they are going to be amazing. So hopefully before too much longer, I'll get to announce what they are. But I know one thing you're going to love them because so far I'm thinking they're pretty great. <laughs> Let's see what else. Um, Robin said she was using a stencil and her son told her she was cheating. I told him to go away. That's Stencils are painting tools and they are not cheaters. You know, a long time ago, we, we thought that stencils were cheating because you didn't, you, you didn't have talent if you used a stencil. Well, we're just getting wiser because now we use stencils 
to just make us look even better than we already do. So, Sharon, the store will be open this year on August 18th and 19th. We are not going to be open day to day anymore. So the warehouse sale is August 18th and 19th. Yeah, mark your calendars for that. We'll be starting advertising for that very soon. And what we'll do is we'll open the whole store and have sales on everything. So if you're coming from out of town, there's a nice little hotel that's catty corner from us. And you can just be very conveniently close. We would love to have everybody come and see us. And we've got new stencils coming out tomorrow as well on the website. They'll be on the website. Yeah, our stencil line is growing by leaps and bounds and they are fun amazing stencils so make sure you keep an eye on those because i'm sure there's some that you really need to have okay so don't forget to mark your calendars may 10th for the country tulips get your may 11th, may 11th. maybe i should do yeah, that may 11th may 11th yeah. um oh this see if i can zoom in this is a new technique that i was playing around with so um, really fun. I, I All of this is just something I did and I thought, well, if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. But it did and I was excited about it. So I'm really anxious to share with you these new technique on the country tulips. So don't miss out on that. It's a free class. All you need to do is pick up the pattern or the e-pattern. You'll automatically be registered. You'll receive the link. You'll get the video, uh, the recorded class. The only thing else you need, uh, pick up a stencil and the class surface, and we do have a special price on that as well. And uh, Sylvia asked about prep for that class. It should be in the pattern, correct? Yeah, they're either pattern or the website. I think I put it on the pattern. It's either, I can't remember. Memory is like it's been zero. so long. <laughs> Lindsay's going to check it out, and it will be outlined in there, so you don't want to miss out yeah, on that. I think it it doesn't say on the website. I think it's just it's in, it's the, in the instructions. Yeah. yeah. So, um, let me go back here. We do have a sign up list for the new Deco Art 15 colors if you're interested. Mm. Info at cdwood.com. We'll put your name on a list, and let you know. Deco Art hasn't told us when it's coming in yet. I did check with them today, uh, and they still do not have them in their system. So, I keep. I keep tabs on it, but we still can't order them yet. They're tantalizing us. They're beautiful colors. Can't wait to get my paws on it. And don't but worry, we will have plenty. So yes. Yeah, we usually get a big semi-truck come pulling in with all the paint. So if you get on the list, make sure you do. Then you'll be one of the first ones that get, receives the shipment. Uh, Facebook Live sale next Tuesday. Don't miss out on that my Christmas Ornament Design Club. Fun, cl fun club to be in because you receive exclusive ornaments with unique technique on them. You don't wanna miss out on that. So have we covered anything? Any questions? Okay. Let me go back through here. Okay, when are the next uh, we answered everything, yep. Okay, Lindsay said we are good to go. So thank you again for joining me today. As always, I hope you picked up a few new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting world a little easier and a lot less stressful. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.